do good, seek peace. And how do you seek that peace? Identify with Jesus Christ. We are called to intentionally and purposefully identify with Jesus Christ. that again. Lack of knowledge about self has overtaken ignorance. You know, lack of knowledge and ignorance are two different things. When you are ignorant, you are choosing not to know. But when you lack knowledge, you just don't know. So it is very much dangerous when you don't know who you are, especially in the kingdom. It's the most dangerous part because you do everything else. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this example. You know, I love cars. Uh, my son knows I love cars, supercars. No matter how fast a Lamborghini is, it is not designed to carry bricks. Did you hear what I said? It's not designed to carry what? Brick and sand. So I can never take my Lamborghini, go to Macro, and say I'm coming here to to pick up my bricks and sand. They will look at me. So many people are living their lives like that. They are living, they are too heavy, not because they are not strong, because they don't know who they are. They are living their life to please anyone and anything that can say anything. And that has pushed people to live a life of unintentional disobedience to God because of lack of knowledge. Amen? That's why many people have gone to to, uh, to, to get the spirit of divination. When they come back, they say they are prophets because they are using a python spirit. But if you, know, if you have known who you are, God will say to you, you don't need to prophesy. I called you to be, to be an intercessor. You are more blessed when you are interceding. Be an intercessor. So, without the intention of discovering your purpose in the kingdom of God, we, we end up doing everything and anything. You know, I said to one a midweek service that God has anointed me with the gift of prophecy. I see spiritually. I see. I mean, not many things that happen surprise, but I'm not going to use that gift to attract masses. They come here, I tell you that you got, I see you doing this and this. No. The kingdom of God needs to be grown by the word of God. Amen. When there is a need, for one to prophesy. The prophecy will come. But I've never seen anyone who overcame the darkness by what? By prophecy. It doesn't happen like that. So I'm saying, walk your walk. Who are you in the kingdom? You know, if I take a loaf of bread because it looks like a brick, and build a two-story mansion using the loaves of bread because of the shape, it will be catastrophic. And people move in. I don't know what will happen. I know some of you are saying, but pastor, where are you going with this? Let me tell you where I'm going. When God created you, he saw you in mind. He created you with you in mind. He knew that there is something that only you can achieve it. Only you can do what God created you to do. It doesn't matter whether you got twins or triplets or whatsoever, or you are a twin or whatever, but there is something that only you can do. Your purpose is the desire or pleasure that you were designed or created for. You know, many people, especially in the church, they are living 
purposeless life. I'm going to give you an example. If I told another community, I'm not going to mention them by name, that we are giving blankets today, last week, there will be no space there. Because they take their purpose seriously. Christians are the ones who are too relaxed. They, they take things of God like, ah, why did they say they want blankets for the poor? Ah, you know what? I will see. It is not urgent anyway. I'm giving this example. Do you know that there is somebody, when you are saying it's not urgent, there's someone who has been sleeping outside from January to today. When you are in that bed, under your pillow or under your blanket with an electric blanket underneath, there is somebody who's sleeping next to the river. Their only source of life is the river. I'm saying that because I know them personally. When we say as a church, let us be purposeful and, and give, you don't want to stand up and do anything. Why? Because you don't understand your purpose as a Christian. You want, every time you want pastor to say, come, let me release a blessing upon your life. No, I'm teaching you to, to activate a blessing upon your life. As I said to you, as for me, I'm not living on what my fathers did. I, I'm living on what my grandfather did. There is no person who lacks in my family, never. Not because of what my father did, because of what my grandfather did. He has worked so hard even for the next generations. We are seated here at church. You are waiting for me to release the word that you are blessed. Whereas you are failing to bless the person that you pass on the street every day. You, you eat bread and throw it in the dustbin because it has too much jam on this side and too much butter on this side. There is someone who does not know the taste of bread for the last three months. So I'm not here to teach you about you are blessed or whatever. I want us to go back to what Christ died for. What, what, what church did Christ die for? You see, uh, Stephen, the one who was stoned, he was chosen to be one of the distributors of food. After the church realized that there is a need in the community, one of the Hellenic communities were complaining that they have been overlooked on the distribution of food. Stephen was chosen, and on the, on the process of him distributing food, he was also evangelizing. He was winning souls. He was stoned for winning souls. What soul are we winning if we can't even take care of a soul? You can't win a soul that you can't take care of. There is a guy who works here next door. On Friday, when I, was, I come to church more often, when I was coming to church, he was walking in wearing a regalia up to here and the head. He was coming from somewhere, you understand. They warned him because they, they gave his family rice, sugar, and tea, and mealy meal. Now he's saving their God. We cannot, we cannot afford to be hypocrites as a church. Amen? You don't like what I'm telling you, no, it's fine. Uh, I love you very much. You don't, you don't have to like it. As long as your ears are still open, it's okay with me. You don't have, we, we don't have to live this life. Let me tell you another point. Your purpose is the sum total of the mark or impact you have, play, you have been placed for here on earth. What impact are you making in your community? Oh, okay, in your family. You are having a bowl full of seed, year in, year out, you are starving because you are not sowing. That was not the message for today, by the way. I just wanted you to 
go through that. Let us go to today's word. Isaiah 9 verse 6. A purple, a purple, a purposeless church spends more time fighting against itself. Members have all the energy to fight against themselves. They have all the energy to listen. What did Humuto say about me? Humuto and Kaila Hamp. Yeah, no, you, because there's no purpose. The, 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 the energy is not being directed to where it can serve. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. I'm, I'm just reading up to seven. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. But I want us to focus on the name Prince of Peace, the name of Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace. You know, I'm one person, I love science, I'm not a scientist. I did not do it at school, uh, but somewhere, somehow, I'm following a lot of scientific experiments that are taking place. One of the latest scientific experiments that is taking place is what NASA is doing. They've sent their, their rover, their robot car, Perseverance, to Mars. You know, Mars is, takes seven months, a seven-month journey to go to Mars. From here to Earth, it's a seven-month journey. But when they, when they go there, they discovered that... Um, there is no life in Mars. Uh, it's, it's a combination of multiple factors, and one of the factors is that there's no magnetic field, and the, atmos the atmospheric sphere, the, low, the pressure is too low for habitation. In essence, there is no life, so nothing can grow in Mars. Nothing can grow, nothing can live in Mars, unless otherwise they can, they are planning to shoot up capsules that will go there with a controlled cabin and control environment like in an aeroplane it's a control cabin present all that so that so that human beings one day maybe human beings can live in mars you know you can take a seven month journey to mars and back why am i telling you about mars there's no life no, nothing can live so i want to put it to you that where there is no peace nothing can live one of the things that the enemy specializes in stealing is the peace it is not by default that Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace. It's called the Prince of Peace. What peace is that? Many people, before I can go to the word, many people are at war with themselves. And that war has prevented them to get the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. You know, it is easier. Let me tell you one thing. Why many people don't have peace? We have concrete reasons why we don't have peace. And those reasons, some of the reasons have got two legs. They walk. And some of the reasons are in the grave. Those people are dead who have hurt us, who have done all the wrongs. And some of the reasons, we live with them daily. But I want to put it to you that where there is no peace, nothing grows. If you want an atmosphere of miracles in your life, if you want progress in your life, the Bible says, pursue peace. What's, what, what is it that to pursue peace? What is to pursue peace? How will you pursue something? You get, you want to get it by whatever means, including compromising yourself. Not compromising yourself. I'm not saying do things. I'm saying including, okay, let me put it this way, including swallowing your pride. 
Because there are certain things that even if we want, you know, no matter how good a seed can be, if I take it to Mars and sow it, because I've been, I've been analyzing the soil in Mars, I mean, through what I've been reading and all that, there is no life in that soil. You can sow some, it won't grow. No matter how good the seed is, it will never grow. Why? Because there is no life. So a lack of peace steals life from that which is supposed to grow in your life. Even the word of God cannot grow where there is no peace. I can tell you, I want to put it to you that you can fast and pray and do everything else, but the first prayer that I urge you to pray for is for your own peace. When I was preparing for this message, I had to go through a test myself. And that's what I go through anyway. If I, God wants me to talk about something, I know that I must pass the test. If I don't pass the test, I've got no right to come and stand here and preach that word to you. Otherwise, I'm giving you tin stuff. A tin fish lay a fresh fish from the sea. They don't taste the same, but they are all cold fish. Let us go to the word. Isaiah 53, verse 5. I want you to see something. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Whoever is telling time to rush, please tell time to slow down. Because now it's about to mm -hmm. Yeah, let time slow down a bit, no? I'm giving you permission. As I to three verse five, I want you to see what the blood of Jesus Christ did. He said, "But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him." Check what comes before healing. What comes before healing? No, 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 I can't hear you. What comes before healing? Peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. But there is no healing without? No, I can't hear you. Peace. So you need to be intentional in pursuing peace. Make it your goal. That I'm going to pursue peace. And can I tell you something? There are a lot of things that have been designed to steal your peace. As it stands right now, the world with, is at war with an invisible enemy who has stolen the peace for many people. And that invisible enemy is a disease. And what they are doing, the strategy is simple. Steal the peace, the disease will, will, will flourish. You didn't get it. Still the peace, the disease will do what? Will flourish. And we are saying, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. My peace is in Jesus Christ. My peace is not what Mr. Tusi can do or not do. My peace is not on what my wife can do or not do. My peace is in Jesus Christ. Because one of the things that are specifically mentioned that he was bruised for, what was chastised at that for, is for my peace. But we don't preach that word. Why? Uh, no, well, let's talk blessings. Uh, son, I see you rich. Eh? Uh, still, I see you making millions, my son. I receive daddy, but you don't have peace. I see you going far. I see you being promoted. I receive, but you don't have peace. You pray for everything else except what? Peace. And can I tell you what we have learned to do? We, we have learned to qualify why we don't have peace. And Give reasons. 
I want you to purposefully disqualify everything that takes your peace. Uh, am I talking to you? Yes. Say, I'm no longer going to give strength to this issue. It has taken my peace for too long and nothing is changing. Let me tell you why we don't have peace. It's because we are not living surrendered lives. A life that is surrendered to Jesus Christ. You will know that, no, this is what he died for. You know, when I discovered this, Holy Spirit said to me, go and read the story of Joseph. When I look at Joseph's life, he was thrown in the pit. I tried to look up to where he was complaining. No way. He didn't complain, nothing. As he was saying, you know what? I'm so blessed. Okay, let me use the string language. I'm lucky the Ishmaelites came and took me out of the pit. Now I'm working in Potiphar's house. At least I'm working in the house. I'm no longer in the pit. Tell me gratitude, ne? I'm, at least I'm working in the house. I'm no longer in the pit. Let me tell you what today's people will say. I miss my father. I want to go home. I was in the pit from a pit to a stranger's house. He could wail and say, do that. But he chose to pursue peace. In the midst of him being removed from the comfort of, of his father's life, he chose to pursue peace. In Potiphar's house, he's accused by Potiphar's wife. He's thrown in jail. While in jail, he purposefully, Barakiran, intentionally chose not to complain. In jail, no words of complaining. Legally, did you know that his destiny helper is also in jail? Had he complained, listen to this, God was not going to use him to see the dreams because nothing grows where there is no peace. Nothing lives where there is no peace because he chose to be still. Be still and know that I am God. So that, that, you know, I think Joseph was hearing this word that be still. Be still. I, son, I know that you did not choose to go to the pit. I know that you did not choose to go to Potiphar's house. I know the accusations are all lies. Be still. Pursue peace. I'll talk to you in that state. Can I tell you something? When you are in the state of peacelessness, God cannot use you. Even you miss your destiny helpers. Because no one in this world wants to be around somebody who is grumpy. Somebody who's complaining all the time. Even if I'm assigned to help you, but your state of being, the way you are carrying yourself, because you are undermining what the blood of Jesus Christ did on the cross. He's, he's not just called the Prince of Peace. He died for that peace also. He was chastised for that peace also, for your sake. He's in jail, but not complaining. And then somebody said, I had a dream. One of the cupbearers who were arrested with him dreamt. Joseph told him that you'll be restored one day. Don't forget me. Let me tell you a complaining Joseph. You know, Kabera, maybe you are here because you did something wrong. Maybe you deserve to be here. 
But you know what? I'm in jail. Can I tell you my story, Cabrera? You know, I was, I had a multicolored coat that my father made for me. My brothers took it. They took it away from me. That's character assassination, assassination, by the way. And after that, they throw me in the pit. And as if that was not enough, they sold me. As if that was not enough, I'm now in jail for something that I didn't do. You know what? I think in a little bit luck. But no, he chose. He purposefully and intentionally chose to be at peace with himself because he knows his redeemer defense. You know, there, there are some things that they're not going to come at in, in, intentional. Okay, can we just read Psalm 34 verse 14? Psalm 34 verse 14. There, there are certain things that they are not going to come. You know, peace does not come. You know, I'm saying this, I know, I'm saying this between me and my wife. I know it. We will fight and we'll say, no, no we're not going anywhere. Now let us seek peace. What, what does peace want you to do? Peace wants you to forgive. Peace wants you to stop counting the wrongs. Peace wants you to trust in the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He said, depart from evil and do good. And seek peace and pursue it. You know, if you want to pursue something, if you can't the high hill, what do I do? What do you do if you want to run after something while you're high hill? What do you do? You take them off, ne? You are departing from evil. What is that evil? Unforgiveness. How can the one, how, how, how can the one who is forgive, who is forgiven, not be able to forgive? Let us go back to the story of Joseph. Joseph departed from evil. He chose to do good. He did not charge for consultation, by the way. <laughs> 7,000 for consultation. He did not charge. He told, he interpreted the dreams for free because he said peace. And then days later, or a month later, he was the right hand man of, of Pharaoh. Ruling over Egypt. There are certain situations that will continue to rule over you until you pursue peace. Hear me well, I'm not undermining your pain. I'm saying that your pain is not greater than the pain that Jesus Christ went through on the cross so that you can have that peace. And the peace that we're talking about is supernatural peace. It's the peace that is beyond circumstances. It's the peace that is beyond situations. It is the peace that is beyond the names of people. From, the, from Genesis 35 to 50, 37 to 50, you don't see Joseph mentioning his brothers anywhere on his way to the throne. He knew that the moment he opened his mouth and mentioned their names, they will, be weigh, they will weigh him down. They will become a weight against his ascendance. I don't know which names are you carrying in your spirit, man, that are weighing you down. God sees you you know, God approached Gideon through an angel. Gideon was busy hiding food from these enemies. 
fearful. So God says, Shalom, mighty man of valor. God sees a mighty woman of valor in you. God sees a mighty man of valor in you. He knows what you are capable of. But depart from evil. Do good. Seek peace. And how do you seek that peace? Identify with Jesus Christ. We, we are called to intentionally and purposefully identify with Jesus Christ. When he was on the cross, you know, there's something that many, maybe, maybe, maybe of you don't understand those words when you say, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. How do you say, Father, forgive them when your, your flesh is hanging on the nail? The only thing that is carrying your weight is your nail, and that nail is on your bone. The same applies to your feet. And a nail, three inch nail has gone through your feet. You are hanging through that. You are bleeding on your side. You have been whipped. Still you say, Father, forgive them. If ever you have been, been hanged on the cross, you have no right not to forgive, not to pursue peace. Identify with Jesus Christ. And let me tell you which peace was Jesus Christ talking about. He's not talking about the peace of no war, no what. No. He's talking about the shalom in the first story. Shalom. What does shalom mean? Well, we greet each other saying shalom here. Yeah? What does shalom mean? It means peace. And what? It's not that only. Success, prosperity, completeness, wholeness, well-being, and welfare. That's the peace that Jesus Christ is talking about. That when you seek that peace, success, prosperity, completeness, wholeness, well-being, and welfare... They all come chasing after you. Why? Because success knows that he can grow there. Prosperity knows that he can grow there. In other words, create the atmosphere of miracles. Am I talking to someone? Jesus Christ was accused of many things. He was accused of using Belzebub. But he forgot to swear at them. Or oh, he intentionally chose not to. Which one is the order? Which, which one is, is, is the right one? He, he intentionally chose not to. For the sake of the purpose. Matthew 5, verse, Matthew 5 verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Being called the sons of God means you are an heir with Christ. Whatever belongs to Christ belongs to you. Hallelujah. Can you make that decision as I'm closing? I'm asking you today. Your car is behind the peace that you are not pursuing. Your house 
is behind the peace. Your promotion is behind that peace. Let me tell you one of the signs of people who don't have peace. They don't give. They can't give. Not that they chose not to. Giving is a sign of life. A fruit, a tree gives fruit because it's alive. Where there is no peace, there is no life. Can I repeat that? Giving is a what? It's a sign of life. A tree gives fruit because what? It's alive. That's why the Bible speaks about the fruit of the spirit. And peace is one of them. Pursue peace. You will see what will pursue you. When you pursue peace, Prosperity, welfare, well being, health, increase, all those things that are in the shalom are your portion. Even no matter how much it tempts you to be right, to want to be right, sometimes being wrong when you are right for the sake of peace, is better than to live in strife and be an unprofitable ground. I'm not saying be a doormat. I'm not saying be a walkover. What I'm saying to you is that by all means, pursue peace. Be intentional in it for the sake of the purpose that God has created you for. We are missing ourselves. As, 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 when I started, I said, we don't know ourselves. We are missing ourselves. Not that, it's not ignorance. We are just missing who we are because there is so much anger. There is so much disappointment. There is so much peace. All those things, there's so much lack of peace. All those things are the designs of the enemy to make you miss the mark. I love it when, I love, you know, some movies like SWAT, you know the SWAT movies? SWAT movies, I love them a lot. One of the things that they use a lot is the smoke bomb, where they throw it down and run or do whatever. Lack of peace create that smoke. I felt in my spirit today that somebody need to hear this. That you can teach, God said you can teach the word the way you want, but there is something that is blocking the word. The word is falling on the thorns and rocks. Unforgiveness, anger, bitterness, hatred. It's not growing. How many of you want to bear fruits? Someone, no, no, I'm serious. How many of you want to bear fruits in your lives? Know this. Create an atmosphere where fruits can grow. Romans 5.1 Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Being justified by faith, we have what? Where there is faith, there is what? Peace. As much as where there is 
healing, there is what? Peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are what? We are healed. Do you want to heal quick? Be at peace. Romans 12, 18. I'll, I'll, I'll give you home Romans 12, 18. And we're going to pray. The, the, there is someone. What does Romans 12, 18 says? Everybody read it. 12, 19. No, no. Okay, let, let's, start, let, let's start with 18. What does 18 say? As much as it depends on who? On who? On who? Is that it? The peace depends on who? So if you are waiting for someone to change so that you can have peace, it's a wrong approach. Can I repeat that again? If you are waiting for someone to change so that you can have peace, it's a wrong approach. If it's possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceable with all men. 19, beloved, what? Do not what? Do not avenge yourself. Rather give place for wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. 20, let's read 20. Uh, many people don't know what is the heaping of coal of fire in this head. I'll teach about it next week when you have time. God is saying, if it's possible, if it's possible, as much as depends on you, give your enemy a drink. <laughs> in other words, God is saying, you don't have an enemy. Whoever is your enemy, is my enemy as God. You as a human being, you were not designed to have enemies. Certain things that are stopping our blessings is our lack of intentions in pursuing peace because we don't understand our purpose here on earth. Ah, uncle, hot, uncle, hot, under rant. Can I tell you? If you see that the chances of you receiving that money is very slim, release that money and say, Father, I'm sowing that money as a seed in that man's life. I'm, re I'm waiting for my, I've done that before. And I've seen God respond positively. Where money just come from nowhere. I'm used to that. Where an SMS will just send a quick, Past I'm blessing you, do this. Vengeance belongs to God. God wants you to be free from those spirits. Why? Because he wants to do something new in your life. He's got plans for your life. How do you feel when you are praying your enemy's name come up and you get disturbed in your spirit in the midst of prayer. Hallelujah. Somebody asked me, Pastor, how do you do this to a person who did this to the church? I said, one, I didn't die for the church. The church belongs to God. I choose to forgive, irrespective of the amount of damage that you might have caused in the church. I choose to forgive. Why? If I don't forgive, the church won't grow. Because I'm creating an atmosphere where nothing grows. I'm creating my own Mars here on earth. 
So look at your life. How many pages of your life are like mass when nothing grows? If you, got, if you are angry with someone because of the money they owe you, you are affecting your financial growth. Release. Forgive them. Find ways of pursuing that, but with peace. If you are angry with someone because of what they did to, the, to your marriage, you are affecting that area of your life, your marriage life. Forgive. Let the peace of God reign. Don't create mars in your financial life. Don't create mars in your peace life. If you are angry with someone because of what they did in your career, release. Release them so that your career can flourish. Don't create mars in your career. Because in other words, look at every area of your life. Seek peace. Pursue it. Grow up and try to hot. Until we try and embrace it. God loves you. That's why you are called. That's why you are called a Christian. That's why you are called a Christian with Christ, Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Is the prince of shalom. Nothing missing. The other name of shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Whole. Being made whole by the love of God. Amen. Stop delaying yourself. Where there is no peace, there is delay. I know from my own practical experience, I've experienced it, I've seen it in my own life. Where there is no peace, there is a lot of delay. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ died, he gave you peace as a gift with salvation. Not as a condition. A condition is called air condition because it conditions the atmospheric temperature what, of the air. It can make it cold or warm. But yours is a gift. How many, how many receive the gift? You see the gift, meaning it can be a gift, meaning it cannot be, it is yours. I want to show you peace as a gift. You see, this peace is a gift of salvation. It's mine. Ne? No matter how much you insult me, it's still mine. But did you hear me? No matter how much you can call me names, the gift is still what? Mine. Am I losing my gift? No. Even if you can come and say whatever you want to do, the gift is still what? Mine. So peace is the gift of salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't hand it over. Keep it. Irrespective of, keep it. You will see, there are some sicknesses that will just disappear because you have peace. Can all stand up. If there's one word that you want, must take home. Peace is your gift of salvation. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do not create your own desert. desert. Do not create your own desert in your life where nothing grows. Lift up your hands. 
with your eyes closed. God wants to do something new for someone. He knows that you are here. You don't know the meaning of the word peace. You know the spelling, but not the experience. 